Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to discuss the histology of the lip under the heading of DIT. You are looking into the sagittal section of the lip. I want to demonstrate you about the surfaces of the lip. The lip basically consists of uh, a central core of striated muscles or skeletal muscles and uh, you must be thinking that this core of skeletal muscular bulk is being embedded in the fibroelastic uh, connective tissue all around. So let's see how its surfaces are being discussed. Uh, now I would uh, mark the various surfaces. This is the outer or cutaneous surface of the lip. You can see that is the ordinary skin. Now you can visualize the second red area or vermilion zone of the lip. This is the next surface. Now if you open the mouth and enter into the oral cavity on just the mucocutaneous junction you see the oral surface or internal surface of the lip. Again this diagram can demonstrate to you about the surfaces the outer or cutaneous surface and uh, then you can see the red area after transitional zone and uh, when you see the inner side this is the inner or mucus or internal surface of the lip. Now concentrate on the histological section in this you can see the three surfaces of the lip. This is the let me uh, now we are supposed to look into various surfaces of the lip in which you can see this is the cutaneous surface or the ordinary skin addressing your epidermis and dermis. Do you know what you expect on your skin? You must be having the hair follicle inside, you must be having the associated sebaceous glands there and you expect the sweat glands are there. These are the regular features you expect on your skin the hairs, the sebaceous glands and the buried sweat glands because you have got sweating, you have got oily skin and the hairs over your ordinary skin and sometimes the associated erector pali muscle along with the hair follicle that causes the uh, look of the goose flesh skin you have already learned in your first year section. Now concentrate that after that a uh, cutaneous surface you are now into the red area after passing through the transitional zone this is the transitional zone and then you enter into the red area the red color of the lip is due to some reasons so we have to justify them that red area is particularly having thickened stratum lucidum you can recall the layers of the epidermis and the transluency of this lucidum layer is uh, different to that of the ordinary skin so this is one of the reasons uh, why your lips appear red and uh, there are underlying uh, the blood vessels there so many numerous large blood vessels and they are trying to be very near to the deeper dermal uh, papillae towards your epidermis and these are the reasons that the rich blood supply and the stratum lucidum depicts your lips as a red area or reddish appearance so a little bit different to that of your ordinary skin because on your skin you expect the stratified squamous but keratinized epithelium and you can see from this the epithelium is going to be thicker and thicker with the addition of the layers and now here the epithelium becomes partially keratinized in the red area or paracretinized. It means few of the superficial uh, surface layer definitely will not lose their nuclei rather keep in them so they are labeled as paracretinized epithelium. Now we have to enter into your inner surface after crossing the mucocutaneous junction that mucocutaneous junction is located where it is present uh, when your lips meet just uh, at that closure line then you enter into the inner or 
the internal oral surface here what you observe that the moisture is due to the inside simple mucus tubular acinar glands over there and there are the reasons that uh, your mucosa is uh, kept moist and there is the excretory duct touching towards your uh, epithelium inside and what type of epithelium you expect here the epithelium here is stratified squamous but now non keratinized and at the very start we have mentioned that the tongue is nothing but a core or bulk of skeletal muscle so orbicularis oris the striated muscle being shown here and the cut section will be addressing various uh, muscular fibers with the peripheral located nucleus and all around you can see the connective tissue will be addressing the typical feature of the connective tissue and the fibroelastic fibers and over the oral surface you see the deeper indented uh, this uh, papillae from the inner core towards the epidermis again for clear concept and to just revise the superior or cutaneous surface what we see we have seen a schematic diagram and here you can observe the shaft of your hair and uh, this shaft of uh, hair is there and uh, the epithelium is straight first squamous keratinized and you can see the association of the uh, these epigrine glands over there which are uh, located very close to it then there are the sweat glands and uh, you can observe the detailed features present along the root of the hair and here you can uh, see another feature which is the location of the erector palli muscle and you can see the sebaceous gland associated very near to your hair shaft now this is the histological cut section showing you the epidermis and uh, this is the epidermis you can observe the sebaceous gland you can observe the hair root uh, this is the typical look you will be uh, looking when you see these under the microscope another good view histologically you can see that the red area sorry the outer cutaneous surface then the red area and the inner or mucous surface here microscope what you see in the oral surface uh, you can observe these are the typical appearance of the epidermis and the underlying features like the hair root and uh, we can observe the sebaceous glands over there the sweat glands and the erector palli muscle now we enter into the red area the red area will now showing the thickness of the this uh, epidermis you would say or the epithelium which is here and uh, you can observe that there are no sweat glands now no sebaceous glands rather it is richly innervated with the sensory nerve endings and uh, the blood vessels are there and a thickened stratum lucidum a reason of the red area of your lip now you are looking to a slide that is showing the inner surface of your lip and here you can observe that the thickness of the epidermis is much more and the deep indented papilla are also there and so many minor salivary glands mucus secreting and uh, simple tubular acinar glands are there and with the short duct are going to be uh, give out their secretion towards the uh, this uh, mucus surface or epithelium epithelium here no doubt you must be knowing is the stratified squamous but non-keratinized that was about all for the lip today thank you very much